Uh, so again, good morning, and uh, it's really my great pleasure to uh, welcome you to the uh, <laughs> Mathematics Department Colloquium. And uh, today we're really honored to have uh, uh, Dr. Palma Kalantari, a distinguished mathematician, uh, whose work kind of bridges the worlds of mathematics and art. Uh, Dr. Kalantari's taught art and math via cubic polynomials, and a word that I didn't know until I until I did uh, until I read this talk: polynomial graphy and modulus visualizations. Uh, we'll explore the kind of connections between mathematical structures, artistic expressions. Uh, this innovative work on polynomial graphy visualizations linked to polynomial read finding techniques, and this is why I thought was quite interesting, has uh, opened certain new pathways for creativity and combining rigorous mathematics exploration with some artistic design. And, uh, you know, it promises to a nice blend of classical and modern mathematics and the applications to fields. And I also thought this quite, quite interesting, very looking forward to hearing it, as diverse as education, design, and our new buzzword, generative AI. So, colleagues, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Ahmed Kalantar. Dr. Kalantar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the honor is mine to be here. And I would like to thank uh, Omeira uh, for inviting me. Uh, is, uh, this subject is, uh, or Polynomiography, I know it's a tough word. I made it up many years ago, and uh, nobody liked it, including my wife who's sitting here. It was very tough to say even for myself, but it made sense. Uh, and if you think of it, it's just uh, polynomial and the suffix graphy are combined, except I didn't want to say Polynomial graphy would be too long. So, polynomiography. And uh, I am a, a computer scientist. I mean, I'm retired now, but uh, years ago when I was at Rutgers, I was asked to, my main subject is optimization, uh, mathematical uh, programming. But years ago, I was asked to design a question. Uh, at a master's program we had uh, on the subject of numerical analysis. And uh, that uh, was in 1990s. Uh, and uh, I got interested in polynomial root finding. And it's a, really a very deep subject, you know, polynomial, I mean, uh, so fundamental. And I've given written many uh, papers on the subject, including a book that I can show you later. And uh, uh, so I, I got into algorithms for finding roots of polynomials. And uh, uh, I, I, then I got interested into visualization of these algorithms. Uh, you know, how do they look like? What kind of images do we get? And then, uh, I images turned out to be interesting, so I showed them to people, and I said, oh, you're a good artist. And that was surprising, because I never took a course in art or did anything artistic. Uh, but what is interesting about polynomiography is that it overlaps with art and math and education, and I have used it to introduce many interesting and sophisticated concepts to all kinds of students, from high school students to, you know, uh, undergraduate, or even I had a PhD student who worked on uh, problems related to polynomials. So it's a pleasure to talk about it here um, and hopefully introduce some of these topics. Uh, so I will show some theory. Uh, some uh, uh, 
uh, you know, I'll go over some of these. Uh, don't have you don't have to read everything that I have on these. Uh, uh, but you know, polynomials we get introduced to them at a very early age, right? In our education, square root of two, for instance, so linear equation. What's the percentage? What is 95 percent of 276? Right? Percentages are really linear equations, and uh, then square root of two, you get into quadratic and so on. But unfortunately, in uh, uh, you know uh, it, we don't get much higher degree polynomials into much higher degree polynomials like high school even colleges across the U.S. or other countries. Uh, I've been lucky, by the way, because of polynomiography to get to have been invited to you know different countries, maybe more than a dozen: Japan, Korea, South Korea who are very, spend a lot of money on their education. And even they don't really uh, go much beyond, you know, quadratic equations in, in high school or even in their college. Of course, calculus is about polynomials first, integration and so on. But it's a different story there. But let me introduce you to a problem that you can explain to a high school students. I call it the algebraic art gallery. So suppose we have a two-dimensional art gallery in the shape of a triangle, and we are showing precious diamonds at the corners of these uh, vertices of this triangle. So this is an art gallery, so there is a camera. We also, you know, the owner wants to have a camera. Uh, and he doesn't want to put the camera at a location. You know, you don't want to put it right next to a diamond you're watching, right? I mean, we would be annoyed if you go to a museum and there's a camera watching you, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so he wants to place this camera at the location X, Y, so that it's not very annoying to the viewers. So where should he place it? Well. What do we, we mean is not uh, 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 shouldn't be annoying? So I, I would say maybe one criterion is to put it at a location so that the product of the distances from the camera to the vertices is maximized. So you, you know you so I, I want the product of uh, remember the diamonds are being shown at those points whose coordinates we know x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on. And uh, so the criterion is to place it uh, at a point that maximizes the product of the distances. Now, this looks like a nice geometry problem, right? Uh, it's a simple problem. You can explain it to anybody, high school student. You, uh, uh, and uh, so what is the product of the distances? It turns out to be this function of two, two variables, x and y. Simply have the Euclidean distance and multiply them out and take the square root. Or take the square root of each and multiply them. So uh, there is another way of looking at this. Uh, problem. If we represent each point x comma x i y i or x j y j as a complex number. Okay, so x j y j, uh, the, the point x j y j, I can write it as z j, which is x i, x j plus i times yj, where i is the square root of minus one. Yes. So now, uh, uh, if I call z to be x plus i y, that's the point where the camera should be placed. Now, the product of these distances 
turns out to be the modulus of the polynomial P of Z, which is this polynomial. So you see, like immediately we can we can introduce, let's say, student to complex numbers. Point goes to complex. That's what it is. You know, uh, to you you represent point in the plane as a complex number. So I is square. What is square root of one? Okay, this is very confusing. A lot of people it centuries to have that realization historically. But once we have it, we might as well say, look, just I is just square root of one. So it's a dummy we're going to use. You know. Uh, so now we have a polynomial all of a sudden before us. And the question is, we want to maximize the modulus of this polynomial. What is the modulus of a, of a, of a complex number Z written with, you know, like an absolute value sign? It's uh, simply the fifth term. In one, x squared plus y squared. So the modulus of a polynomial at each z is 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 a you uh, get a number. You know, so we can talk about the modulus. And now this is uh, the question is where is the maximum point? And as we shall see later, this maximum point is. Uh, the point that maximizes the modulus of this polynomial over the triangle. And what's not so easy, you know, if you ask many people, even you know, there's, uh, where, is, where do you think the maximum is going to be? People will guess. Maybe the centroid, yeah. right? Okay. Many of you have all. But it turns out to be somewhere on the edges instead of uh, instead of inside yeah. the triangle. And uh there's to be on the boundary of the triangle. I'm sorry it my turns out to be on the boundary of the triangle. Yes on the boundary. Right. By the way my hearing is bad so I walk you free to ask questions if you like. So uh the distance, okay, now the, the modulus surface, you have a polynomial, complex polynomial, you can associate a modulus, uh, you know, to function to that, and that modulus for each complex number, which is x plus i, y, gives you a number, it's a modulus, so it's going to be bigger than or equal to zero. So it's a surface. It's a surface like this, right? goes to infinity and it touches down the xy plane only at the roots. In this case, three times because it's a polynomial of degree two. Okay. Now, so the modulus is, is a surface, like a mountain. Okay. Now imagine if you go hiking or you know, and you're standing at the mountain, uh, any point on the surface, there is a there, is, there are directions that take you upward, and there are directions that take you downward. Okay, and there are directions where they don't go anywhere. Okay, now th this modulus function turns out to be this, and if you graph it, if you graph it. Uh, you get the surface. So, so ascent direction uh, of the modulus of a polynomial, if you write f of z for f of x, y, which, which was the modulus of the polynomial, is, is a direction where you can go upward, right? If you're going hiking, Standing at the mountain, you know, at a at point, there are some directions where it goes upward. You don't want it, it's not necessary to go upward all the way, but it goes up for a while. Likewise, you can define directions of descent. Now, you may ask the question so I say a cone of descent or cone of ascent, 
that's a cone of ascent. Is all those directions where it's upward. You can go a little bit, or maybe a lot, but what you care is that you can go at least a little bit upward. And likewise, you can decide of, uh, of uh, uh, write the cone of descent. Now, there's a theorem that, you know, because of interesting polynomials, I just happened to accidentally realize and then prove it. Why do you think that the modulus, the ascent and descent direction is going to be for the modulus of polynomial? What shape would they take? They turn out to be very nice, uh, take a very nice shape. Uh, I have this theorem, I'm just going to give you uh, not a precise statement, but if you are at the root of a polynomial, where the polynomial is zero, it's a non constant polynomial. Every direction is ascent, right? On a polynomial, non constant, you can't be constant. And take a constant value. Right? So every direction is up. Now, if you're at a point, any regular point, where the derivative is not zero, 50% up, 50% up. Okay. Upward, 50% down. I don't care how far we go in each direction. Remember, ascent means you go up, then you go up. If the first derivative is not zero. If, 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 if f prime is zero at a point, it splits nicely, you know, to, to this uh, sectors. And if the second derivative is also zero, it splits like that. That's a beautiful property of polynomials. Right? I call it the geometric modulus principle. Now, how many of us have seen, we know the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? Fundamental theorem of algebra says you take any polynomial, complex polynomial, uh, it, has, it has a root. Okay, yes. And of course, it means there's n roots. Now, we have all seen proofs of that. Right. So many different things. Actually, Gauss, one of the greatest mathematicians, German mathematician, supposedly his PhD thesis was about So it's a profound theory, uh, this theory. But now, uh, how many of us remember Gauss's or have, have read Gauss's uh, thesis? I haven't. Uh, and, uh, there are many proofs of the fundamental theorem, you know, the American mathematical model writes proofs, new proofs, and I can give a one line proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra using this thing. Okay. Take any point. If it's not a zero already, it, you can find the descent direction. In fact, if you close your eyes and pick a direction at random with probability of one half, it's going to be descent. That's nice. Same. So, uh, so uh, if it's not a zero, there is a descent direction. So all you have to show is that as the polynomial, as we go away, this you know uh, from let's say the origin, the modulus of a polynomial goes to infinity. So it goes to infinity when you are when you're outside of a big circle, big disk, and it has this property that, that at any point, uh, it, it, uh, it splits if it's not a circle. Therefore, it's continuous function, it's minimum of n. Now, you look at the minimum. If it's not already zero there, you can find the direction of the standard constant. So it's like a, uh, I think it gives a very simple proof of the fundamental well, that theory. Says, you know, that says you have, finite, you have a finite number of zeros. That doesn't say that you get n. Well, once you get one zero, you can divide it. And you get, you know, divided by c minus that root. 
And you get that by many of the people. So, uh, so this is one advantage of geometric module species. Now, another property that you can prove of this geometric, okay. Now, if you look at, you go to these, you know, uh, like Wolfram software, whatever other stuff, and you look at C cube and its modules. At the origin, you're going to see this. So, yeah, the origin is a is a critical point. The first derivative is zero, and the second derivative is zero, and therefore we must have six directions. You know, let's use exactly Now, why wasn't this theorem, you know, this theorem uh, not seen? I don't know. I was talking to a Mathematician and I said about this thing. Oh, somebody should have seen it. Well, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they, that's what they told me the compliments of the So, uh, well, now if you just draw these things, you know, it's like, like this, you get, um, you get. So I put these randomly, but it turns out there, there is a polynomial whose modulus plot conforms to the ascent directions given here. Maybe there is more, but it will have at least these ascent and descent directions. But the formula could be complicated. So here you can say here is the minimum, right? This point, the center must be, must be a zero. There must be a zero. Here, the derivative is not zero. Here, uh, the derivative is zero. And here, the derivative is zero three times. So, uh, now, is this art to you? If you don't believe this is art, I can show you some stuff by, by I believe he's a Brazilian artist too has put his work in Noma, you know, based on this ascent and descent even mm -hmm. you just limited it. This is another one. Well uh, look, you can put it on a t-shirt. Uh, I just produced this experimentally. So FTA fundamental theorem as I said is a uh, consequence of is a consequence of that. Uh, something called Gauss Lucas theorem. Gauss Lucas theorem says if you look at the roots of a polynomial, which are points, and if you look at the convex hull of that, of the roots, convex hull of a set of points is the smallest convex set. You know, so uh, it says, uh, Gauss Lucas, that the derivatives. Uh, the roots of the derivatives are there, inside, not outside. And the maximum modulus principle, the maximum modulus principle says, you know, that the maximum of the modulus of polynomial over the domain is attained at the boundary, in particular for a triangle. But we can also prove this directly from the geometric modulus theorem. So uh, it's a nice, uh, powerful theorem, so it's very simple. And you can move art. Uh, uh, now, a non-technical description of GMP, the geometric modulus principle, or polynomials, is in this paper, the fundamental theorem of algebra for artists. Which is an article by uh, myself and Bruce Torrance in Math Horizon 2013. It's a uh, you know like a fun I guess not not very technical. And interestingly, uh, Princeton University Press writes a book each year, best writing in mathematics. And surprisingly, they chose our article as one of those. Uh, there is more, really, more things that can be proven. 
about the geometric modulus principle. And there is a graduate student in, I mean, he's finished uh, in uh, Rutgers after I had retired that he wrote his PhD thesis on extensions of the geometric modulus principles more than just for moving. Um, Okay, this is an actual modulus plot for this polynomial. Uh, Bruce Torrance, who is the co-author of that book, he generated this image. And you see here is the origin. Uh, the first derivative, I mean, you know, so several derivatives are zero here, and that's why it splits into this. Now, you, you can imagine with these, if you can design polynomials. What I would like to see, uh, I mean, you know, I, I, as I, I've said I was a computer scientist and I took a chef, I had to do my teaching and many other things. But in another life, I will just take the geometric modulus principle and take one of these softwares that you could grab generate nice images, some symmetric ones, and maybe put it on T-shirt, or maybe make jewelry out of that, and rent a, a store in Manhattan somewhere, and have my wife study. I was just about to say your wife, like that would be So they can really design. I mean, people think, you know, this is what I tell one, uh, students that, Polynomials, usually they have the impression that here is the person, here for a teacher, the polynomial, do something, or polynomials use factor. No, polynomials you can present yourself. They're not thought to you. There's enough polynomial for all of humanity and other beings across the universe. Okay, solving a real cubic equation, I want to go quickly over that. How many, uh, you know, we, cubic equations, we don't usually get into them, right? Not in high school, not in college even. Uh, we, we remember the quadratic formula. You all remember. And in my opinion, using the quadratic formula, is a good test for Alzheimer. You know, when I cannot remember that, then I would know that I have Alzheimer's disease. Because, you know, how many times I will see that formula in my life. So, uh, uh, cubic equation, how many people remember the cubic equation? I don't either. I'm not, I'm not my memory is not that good. But, uh, okay, there is much written about that. And in fact, in an article after the retirement that I wrote with a, a mathematician friend in Iran, uh, we, there is, you, you all have heard of Omar Khayyam, the Persian poet, and Persian by her, a uh, famous poet. And, uh, astronomer and all that. But he uh, was actually the first one, historically, who looked at cubic equations. And he has a way of geometric solutions for cubic equations. But we study 2C with another mathematician coming after uh, uh, Khayyam. It turns out that 2C has also nice results that by the way, this previous formula, complicated formula, is Cardano's formula. We all know that has a huge history, you know, Cardano's formula. And it wasn't actually Cardano first, but there were others, but, you know. Uh, uh, so Italians take credit for that Cardano's formula, and they should. And they're the first who discovered it in 14th, I think, century or 15th century. But it turns out that 2C, in 11th century, there's something that resembles that formula. A good thing, actually. But 2C is not known. 
Tarkovina Tusi. There are two Tusis, so this is another one. And he was actually smarter, I mean, mathematically. Is he the one astronomer? Is it the astronomer Tusi? Is it the astronomer Tusi or is another Tusi? Tarkovina Tusi. Is it the astronomer? No, no, he's not. Okay. He's better than the astronomer. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, it's amazing. I mean, didn't they have anything else to do in the 11th century? Uh, now, also, after the, I wrote this paper, it was uh, 2023, I gave, I, I, I gave a method which uses solving real cubic equation without card on the scoreboard. It's an archive and uh, it's hard to find journals that would be interested in cubic equation. I'm very strange. But actually, this paper uses builds on 2C's classification together with Smale's point estimation. Smale, Stephen Smale, is one of the most celebrated American mathematicians, right? He's won the Fields Medal and done very nice work on polynomials. And uh, he has something called uh, point estimation. He can, even a point, complex polynomial and a point, he has a condition on polynomial values at that point, as well as his first, second, third, etc. derivatives is an inequality. If that inequality is satisfied, according to Smith's result, uh, you, that is in the quadratic region of convergence of a polynomial, which means that you need very few iterations to converge. So it's a very nice result, you know. Otherwise, if you give me, if you have a polynomial and you start at the point and you say, can I take Newton's iteration, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, how many, will this converge to a root? That's not known. Only if some conditions are satisfied, you can prove them. Okay, I don't want to get into the details of that, but I want to say that even cubic polynomials have uh, still are, you know, very interesting uh, subjects. Now, Newton's iteration, even a polynomial P of Z and a C complex number, Z0, Newton's iteration simply takes zj to zj plus one according to this form. It's a beautiful theorem. And uh, there is a handwritten version, I mean, uh, May has written this, and I guess it's exhibited in some museum. This formula is that pure uh, and powerful. Now the orbit of a point means what happens if I iterate Newton's method? If you look at Newton's method, what it does, it takes a point in the plane, complex plane, it takes it somewhere else. Okay. And then if you apply the iteration Newton's to that point, you go somewhere else. And the whole thing, this infinite sequence of points that you get, is called the orbit at that point. So, uh, Basin of attraction of a root of a polynomial is the set of all those points that the orbit will make you converge, bring you, brings you to that too. Julia set is the boundary of any of the basins of attraction. And Fatou set is the complement of the Julia set. Uh, Newton's function is only one of the things, methods for finding a root, iterative methods. Visualization of polynomial root finding via iterative methods. That's what polynomiography is, polynomiography. It leads to images called polynomiographs. Polynomiographs could be fractal and non-fractal. Fractal images, we have all some impression, right? If you pick the point and zoom in, you get something similar to it. Polynomiography can serve as a tool for mathematicians, scientists, educators, students, and artists. 
polynomiography can serve as an effective tool for teaching and learning deep uh, topics about uh, math and algorithm. And there are uh, several articles in there. You can have a book I'll show you, which I wrote, of course, a long time ago, 2008. Here is a polynomial fractal image of z cubed minus 1. We have all seen this, right? This was actually uh, Cayley, mathematician Cayley, in 1897. He thought that the basins of attractions, they see they, there are three roots, and the yellow represents the basin of attraction of one, and then the other colors for the other two. So, Cayley uh, uh, thought, because he didn't have a computer at his time, but he thought that the one, uh, that the basin uh, uh, of attraction of the roots would be actually the Voronoi regions of the roots. Voronoi region is a is a very important concept in in you know geometry, in computer science, animations, and all that. Uh, Voronoi region of a set of points can be in two dimension or three dimension or any dimension. If you look at these points, which I put here, let's say at random, let's take this point and call it A. The Voronoi region of this point consists of all those points in the plane that are closer to A than to any of the other points. Okay. So each point has its own region. It's like a territory. You know, so I'm standing here. I can freely move my hands here. It's not impolite. This is my Voronoi region. But if I come close to you, very close, then I'm getting, entering into your Voronoi region. And uh, uh, it turns out that, so Katie thought that the, let me skip this, that the Voronoi region of the roots would be, like their, uh, sorry, that the Voronoi regions would be actually the basins of attraction. But, and he, he said several times that he has a proof and he's going to write it, but he never wrote it. Because it's not true, actually. Under Newton's method, it happened. It's not true. But it, it happens to be the case that he was almost right. In other words, you can find other iterative methods better than, stronger than, uh, you know, uh, uh, Newton's point. Newton's method is like a nice talk, you know. But there are other parts. Faster cars, more expensive. This is another polynomial graph of t cubed minus one using, uh, uh, you know, a different way of finding, finding the roots. These are also uh, uh, different polynomial graphs of z cubed minus one. I call them life and death. Uh, in fact, two images of the same polynomial under different methods. So iteration methods are different ways of trying to find roots. They have, they look at, it's like taking a picture from a polynomial. You know, you can use different lenses, different effects to get different images. And that's what is nice about polynomiography that you can. You can learn techniques to generate different images. There's, you know, the design. This is again also another method which I call, uh, which is uh, will be a, uh, something else, Newton method plus something else, so I can combine these two. Yeah, that's a question I wanted to ask you. Yeah. So there's the, iterate, the root finding techniques, the particular methods that you're using, they're all based somehow in Newton's method. Or, uh, it's a good question. No, they're not based in They're not based but in, in fact. Maybe in some sense you are right that there is. There is a family of iteration sure. functions, which are called basic family, infinite family. Newton's method is that the flip of the matrix. So in fact, you have an infinite number. And as you take these uh, different ones, and there are different ways altogether. You know, the 
And by the way, polynomials, you can, I mean, you can, as I said, you can uh, see, how do I see a polynomial? Uh, you can show it through a for formula, right? But I also, when I talk to students, I say, essentially is a way of encoding a bunch of points in the plane. Take any, any way uh, that you want. Take those points. Here is, we are in another method. This one looks like there is a famous jewelry design that's like this. See, I mean, if I had the uh, capital, I could put all these out of business. Uh, it's uh, on the right. Why the capital? You can, you can get different effects from polynomial, but different methods. You see this image on the left looks like a leaf. In fact, I found this image on the left in uh, Instagram. Uh, and the image on the right, I tried to produce it via some techniques. There is some similarity there. Uh, Z squared minus one, the left image is the polynomial graph of Z squared minus one. The right image is Z squared plus one. It's amazing that while we teach about the roots of z squared minus one, even in high school. Oftentimes, we don't talk about this compass. But when you look at this polynomial, that's just the rotation of the other way. I was in Korea several times, and one time I had a whole audience, about 200 middle uh, schoolers. And I told them I'm going to make a map of I'm Korea, South Korea, by this uh, polynomial. Well, I take z squared minus one. I apply Newton's method, except I put a constant alpha, which is some complex thing. And then I, I generate, see, this is a map. This this like this is it. And you can imagine how excited the oh, you can do this in the instance. This best alpha, uh, I was able alpha happens to be this. Uh, actually, some student when I was in India, also giving a talk on polynomial, a graduate you know, at one of the IITs, Indian Institute of Technology, he found uh, this alpha. Uh, here is also another image of x squared minus 1. In fact, it was appeared in the cover of C-Graph on the graphics, you know, one of their publications. Uh, so, so here there's, uh, you know, really you can do a lot of uh, different things out of this. And uh, now, uh, how much time do I have, sir? Yeah, we, we, we can go for another 10, 15 minutes. If you can, if we can. So then I have, I was going, after this, I was going to get into theoretical stuff, but I guess I skipped that. In, in, instead, I will show you. Sorry, it seems like some. How do I get to? Okay. Which one do you want to get? I'm. I want to get to show another one of the PDF files. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This one. No, this one. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Okay. So I'm going to show you 
some images in the next 10 minutes, some font things may be. All these are generated with, uh, you know, software that have uh, been developing over the years. Uh, symmetry, you can get nice symmetric images. Uh, cathedral. Of course, uh, over the years, I've had some, you know, quotes uh, from uh, different sources uh, when they learned about this. The Discover magazine said, lose your fear of math with computer graphics that display the beauty and symmetry hidden within algebraic equations. Ivor Peterson uh, had something nice to say. Here is Rafa, uh, a physicist of Harvard, like that, uh, a mathematician in Pennsylvania, professor in France, in Spain. And these are actually the comments that I like the most by a 14-year-old who said, I love it. <laughs> and uh, or even this, from a nine-year-old, nine years old uh, boy at an event called Rutgers Day, who said, I didn't know math could make beautiful images. So you can imagine that if you can interest students with polynomials, they get uh, they get interested in it. And uh, here, polynomial, people say, what's a polynomial equation? I say you can even find in percentages as polynomial equations. It's a very important problem. Even when you look at Riemann hypothesis, which is a million dollar problem uh, unsolved, it's not about polynomials, but it's about zeros. Uh, we learn about linear equations in middle and high school, and uh, okay, let me skip over this. I even have a futuristic love story based on polynomials, but I'll skip that. Uh, so how do I select a nice polynomial? There are many ways, infinitely many ways. Uh, really, every polynomial can be interesting. For instance, imagine you take your social security number. Your social security number, you can convert it into a polynomial. You see how? Zero, if you read from the right, zero, three x, seven x squared, and so on. So I get a polynomial of degree eight. And I can convert this into polynomial graphs in many ways. This is one. Imagine that your credit card and something like that, an image. And you can have a device that can read it all, this image. And you don't have to be worried about somebody standing next to you reading your social security. In media, this is the image of x squared minus one, as I told you, computer graphics. In one of the images was used on fearless symmetry, the book that two mathematicians wrote about, in a sense, the proof of Fermat's last theorem. Why? This is my own book. Uh, the image is uh, on a conference called Bridges years ago, even in physics and in Spanish magazine. Uh, years ago, this uh, magazine of Finland used one of my images. And I was surprised how did they find out about it then. But I realized they were very good in educating uh, you know, uh, high school students, middle school and high school students. It's called the mathematics of a heart. 
So how did I get this image from polynomial? I simply use, you know, with the software, you can click, 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 click. So I put the roots of the polynomial by touching this one. I may get a horrendous polynomial. Yes. And then and then I give these points that make a polynomial whose roots are these. And then I feed it into ways of generating images of it. So I call polynomiography really a, a game of hide and seek. You find the points with, with the polynomial, then try to search for them. In the process, we generate images like that. Uh, this is an image which was uncovered one of the rafters. Uh, I've got some on first year student. Uh, uh, it's like it. It's something totally different side of mathematics. Teachers also like it. And here is a time where I was feeling artistic, trying to make different images based on polynomials. Had some exhibitions. Uh, that image, even students who use the software, okay, in design. Polynomiography in design. Uh, here is an actual Persian carpet that we own. Persians, you know, the carpets are very common. So I used this the, the, on the image and I generated an image that you see here. But finding the right polynomial and a right the application of iteration functions that would give this. And then I told my wife that we should turn it into an actual product. So we made a card for that. Here's another image, here's another card. These are other images that I would love to turn into carpet. So, uh, maybe if you are interested. I even tried to make a American flag using polynomial. But of course, it was a tough job. You can't find the right polynomial. So, I had to do it in pieces. And I call this evolution of stars and stripes. I mean, you look at, we all like art, right? New York is a great place for art, abstract art, especially. You look at the, the left image is by an artist, the right image is me, I don't know what The left image is by Picasso, the right image. Uh, is made by polynomial. Here is uh, Sol Duet, image on the left, by a famous American uh, artist, a geometrical art, and uh, the, the right image. Here is Klimt, Austrian artist, and it can generate at least a dress, different kind of dress. You can even get into 3D. If you like. Okay. And to whom can it appear? Well, it can appear, can it appeal to kids? Hollywood? Lead to games? You know, I made this from Hollywood. Of course, you can. Also, do collage of images. Uh, her name is Miss Paul.
You know this one. Was it? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it's <laughs> okay. I guess I'm out of time. I can go on. I still have three more. You know, preserve my time. Let's stop. Thank you. Let's let's thank the speaker. <laughs> oh, we we have time for just a few questions, so I'll, I'll take questions from. Go ahead. You have an app or a web page where somebody can. Yes, I I there is a if you Google polynomial, you'll see different things. So somebody can play with them, you know, for themselves. And, you know, yes, uh, there are some demos. You know, okay, here is what I did, and I will be, uh, I'll be honest about it. I tried to uh, get funding years ago, so I can generate the software, maybe a commercial software. Not so much for making money, but I thought that's the way to develop it, you know, really make it spread it. It's very hard. Very hard. I found it very difficult to get funding for these things. And also, they looked at me and said, who the hell are you? Are you a computer science professor? Are you a mathematician? Are you an educator? And if I said, once I said, well, maybe you can think of me as an educator. But they said, but you're not an educator. You're a mathematician. I'm sure okay. okay. But eventually, uh, I hope to make uh, you know, to make available mm -hmm. the software, not to make money, really, but just to make it uh, so that people can expect. Yes, I mean, the hope is, I'll, what I want to do right now is I want to, it's difficult to show it because I wasn't using my own laptop. I'm going to show you how you generate an image, a polynomial graph, actually. Uh, Yes, the hope is here is what I have done with the say a demo version of the software. Places that I've shown it in Korea, in Japan, I had them play with the soft demo software. Teachers, students, they really liked it a lot. They would get involved with it. You know, it's like I, I would try to show them how the software is like, you don't need to show me, I'm figured out myself. It's a tool of discovery. And it's a way to feel the questions that I was asked by the students were amazing. Mm -hmm. So deep. They didn't have an easy question. I, I, not this, I mean it everywhere. Even US, you go anywhere, any high school, uh, any middle school in, in America. And uh, let them play, and you see they ask profound questions. Because it's such a simple. You see, you put it in the hands of artists, they'd be using it, and they would never acknowledge your work. <laughs> they would tell it as your own original right. work. I also <laughs> tried to connect with artists, mm -hmm. and many of them said, oh, this is very interesting. Said, well, let's do something together. Well, you know, I'm kind of busy right now. So math uh, artists, they are scared of mathematics. You yeah. say something is based on mathematics, they don't want to talk to you, you know, which is really uh, unfortunate, I think. So, and I think one of the, uh, you know, limitations that I had, uh, I was a professor, okay, I'm supposed to teach, I'm supposed to do my own research, you know, because uh, after all, I could be maybe fired, you know, what are you doing, playing games? In fact, the impression they, that maybe they had first was that, I ran out of ideas, and therefore I was playing with, with art. Later. But I'll I'll show you. So, uh, however, as you said, you know, there I have a, I have a website mm -hmm. which is out of date. I hope I get back okay. to it. Uh, but if you do a Google search on polynomial, you will find material. Some of the things that I mentioned, what people said, uh, and uh, definitely. And I'm writing, by the way, a second book, which I wanted to be, you know, more for undergraduate and maybe researchers. See, uh, I will show it here. The, 
The software is like a canvas. Okay. This is an empty canvas. So you can either do that, or you can say, for instance, Z cubed minus one by default, and then hit the button here, and it generates. Exactly. Order. That's what I was looking for. You can change the functions, the polynomials, and flick it around. And yes. It. Yes. Okay. And look at this same polynomial, Z cubed minus one. Okay. Now I'm going to go into another mode, which in fact uses an infinite family of iteration functions altogether. So uh, Oops, sorry. And you see it's it's also maybe I'll make it big. You see this is also Z cube minus one. Yeah. And if I go to yet another uh, mode. I get this, and I can color this. Now, the operation of multiplication, how many people like to multiply two polynomials by hand? Raise your hand. Nobody likes it. But the operation of multiplication here, I'm going to do for you, instead of this, z to the 4 minus 1, OK, times. Z minus. Okay, this is Z to the four minus one. Times Z, for instance. And if you multiply it, let's say by. C to the eight. I don't know, let's say it's very cool. So there are many many ways in many ways. And uh, yes, I, I guess I better stop. Uh, uh, otherwise I'm just gonna take one more question if there was enough. Go ahead. The beginning you were trying to maximize the distance. Sorry, the beginning you were trying to maximize the distance between the security camera and the diamond at the vertices. Well, then you did try to maximize all that. Yeah. 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 So if you had done the sum, very good question. Yeah. If you do the sum, it may turn out to be that the optimal is that one of the points. You know. So the only way I avoid, or at least one way, is to take the product. But the sum wouldn't turn out to be a nice polynomial. And I mean, it, it, it makes it easier. Once you know it's on an edge, of course, it's easy. It's a polynomial version. And uh, that problem by itself means the, you know, it has ex extensions which are that. I, I think I don't think they'll know. What's your last question? Okay, so I, I should say on behalf of uh, colleagues here, I think you really open their eyes to kind of. Uh, you know, the polynomial is a fundamental uh, tool, and I think you've kind of opened your eyes to many of us uh, in our calculus class to talk about the tips and uh, this kind of understanding about respective the tools with them. Uh, we're deeply appreciated. And I should say on a personal note, uh, I too, some years ago, I went to Enskede in the Netherlands in this conference of math and art. So we're a kindred spirit in that regard. So, yeah, except I was, I was talking about trunks. Oh. And, and, and thinking about the modes of vibrations of the drum, thinking about how you might see that. 
in an artistic context. So, uh, you know, we, we we want to thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Being it's here. a pleasure. Thank you. We thank you.